Imagine I have a function f of x. Let's say whose graph looks like this. And I want to approximate f around a point. Let's say around x equals a. One way to do this is via the tangent line. The tangent line is a linear function that matches both the value of f and its slope, or derivative, at the point x equals a. So therefore, it's a good approximation to f in the neighborhood of a. The formula for the tangent line, if we write it as a function, is l of x equals the value of f at a, f of a, plus the slope, f prime of a, times x minus a. Sometimes we might write it as y equals f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. It's the same thing. But here we want to use the function notation l of x. Let's verify these two facts. That l of x matches both the value of f and its slope at x equals a. Let's check the value of l at a. Plugging in x equals a, we get f of a plus f prime of a. No x's so far. Here's our first x. Plug in x equals a, we get a minus a. That's 0. So we just get that l of a is equal to f of a. Indeed, we match the value of f. Let's calculate the derivative. l prime of x. If we differentiate l with respect to x, the first term goes away because it's a constant. So we get 0 plus f prime of a, again, is a constant. So it just comes out of the derivative. And then we need to differentiate x minus a. With respect to x, that's just the number 1. So the derivative of l is just a constant, f prime of a. That makes sense because l is just a line. It has constant slope. And in particular, the derivative evaluated at a is that same constant number, f prime of a. So indeed, l of x matches the slope of f at a. The linear approximation l of x is an example of a Taylor polynomial. In fact, we call it the first order Taylor polynomial and sometimes denote it by p sub 1. So p sub 1 of x is the function f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. So p1 of x, or l of x, is the first order Taylor polynomial to f of x around x equals a. The first order Taylor polynomial is a good linear approximation to the function f around x equals a. As shown by the plot of p1 of x, or tangent line, the first order Taylor polynomial matches the value and slope of f around x equals a, but it misses the curvature of f, because of course p1 of x is a straight line. f, on the other hand, curves downward here around x equals a. If we want to match this behavior of f, we can't use a linear function, but a natural extension of a linear polynomial is to try to use a quadratic polynomial. So the question is, how can we use a quadratic polynomial to approximate the behavior of f around x equals a? and capture some more of the behavior of f than we could with the linear approximation. Let's call this quadratic function q of x for now, for quadratic. We'll make the linear part be just like the linear approximation. 
So we'll start off with f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a, just like before. But now let's add a quadratic term. This term should look like x minus a squared. But then the question is, what should be the coefficient in front of the quadratic term? Let's call it c for now. How should we choose c? Well, remember that we wanted the linear approximation to match the value of f and its derivative at x equals a. A natural extension is to require that q of x, the quadratic polynomial, matches not only f and f prime at x equals a, but also the second derivative, f double prime of a. This second derivative captures the curvature of the function f, and it makes sense that we require that q of x have the same curvature around x equals a. So let's require that q of x matches f at x equals a. So q of a should equal f of a. Then it matches the first derivative. So q prime of a should equal f prime of a. And that it matches the second derivative. So q double prime of a should equal f double prime of a. Well, let's test this out and see if it helps us determine what c should be. First of all, q of a is f of a plus f prime of a times a minus a plus c, whatever number that is, times a minus a squared. Both these a minus a's go away, and so q of a is f of a, independent of what we choose for c. So we match this criterion, that q of a is equal to f of a. This is true already based on the, the form we chose for q of x. Next, let's calculate the derivative. q prime of x, the derivative of f of a is a constant, so that's 0. We've done this already. The derivative of the linear term is f prime of a, that's just a constant, times the derivative of x minus a, which is 1. And now we need to differentiate the quadratic term. c is just a constant. It doesn't depend on x, so it just comes out of the derivative. And now we need to multiply by the derivative of x minus a squared. Using the chain rule, we see that this is a composition of subtracting a and then squaring. So first we take the derivative of just the squaring function, which means the 2 comes down, and we multiply it by the argument, which is x minus a. And now we need to multiply by the derivative of the function, subtracting a, or x minus a, and that just gives us a 1. So the derivative q prime of x is f prime of a, plus 2c times x minus a. Unlike for the linear approximation, the derivative is not constant. It depends on x. This makes sense, as the slope of a quadratic does change as you move along the function. What we're concerned with is the derivative at x equals a, q prime of a. Plugging in x equals a, we get f prime of a, that doesn't change, plus 2c times a minus a, which is 0. So we just get f prime of a. Very good. We've satisfied our second condition that the slope of q is the same thing as the slope of f. The first derivatives match. And again, this works for any value of c. That's why we wrote q of x this way. This is perfect because now we're still free to choose c. And the idea is that we're going to choose c to match the third condition, that the second derivatives match. So let's calculate the second derivative of q. We need to differentiate the first derivative, which is f prime of a plus 2 times c times the quantity x minus a. 
f prime of a is a constant, so that just goes away, that's just zero. 2c is a constant, so that comes out. And now we need to take the derivative of x minus a, which is just 1. So the derivative q prime of x is 2 times c, just a constant number, which makes sense since the second derivative of a quadratic should just be a constant number. So when we plug in x equals a, we get that the second derivative of q is 2 times c. And we want this expression to be equal to the second derivative of f double prime of a. And we're able to do this because we can choose c to be whatever we want. So if we set this equal to f double prime of a, this implies that our condition on c is that c equals the second derivative, f double prime of a, divided by 2. Looking at the pattern of terms for q of x, you might have thought that c, the coefficient in front of the quadratic term, might just be the second derivative of f evaluated at a. But it turns out we need to divide by 2. And that's because when you differentiate the quadratic term, a 2 comes down, so we need to divide by 2 to cancel that. If we choose c equals f prime of a divided by 2, then indeed we've matched the second derivative. So what we have derived is the second order Taylor polynomial, which we can write as p sub 2 of x. p2 of x is f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a over 2 times x minus a squared. p2 of x is the second order Taylor polynomial to f of x at x equals a. Or you could call it a quadratic approximation, but usually we'll just use the term second order Taylor polynomial. The graph of the second order Taylor polynomial might look something like this. The idea is that it's an even better approximation to f of x in the neighborhood of a. Of course it does a terrible job as you get further and further away from the point x equals a.